Hey everybody, welcome to the Quench Your Adventure YouTube channel. Today, we'll be talking about boondocking. What is boondocking? Where can you boondock? Why do we prefer boondocking to campgrounds? And lastly, how do you find these places to boondock? Let's roll. We're Jenna and Jeremy. In August 2020, we bought an RV. In September 2020, we sold everything and hit the road full time. Follow our adventures as we explore more of our incredible planet Earth. Don't forget to press that subscribe button and turn on post notifications for weekly travel videos. You can find us on Instagram at Quench Your Adventure. Now on to the good stuff. As full-time RVers, lovers of the outdoors, and big fans of saving money, boondocking is a huge part of our life now. A quick bit of background, as you heard in the intro, we've only been full-time RVers since September of 2020. Before that, we traveled around in our partially converted van, and before that, we looked for campgrounds or campsites where we could stay for free. That said, we're not experts, but we have some experience and we hope that sharing it with you all will help you to learn this concept, learn about boondocking, and get out there and quench your adventure. So first, what is it? Boondocking is a form of dry camping. Dry camping basically just means no amenities. There's no hookups, no water, no sewer, no place to throw your trash, just you, your rig, and a plot of land. Boondocking is dry camping on public lands, which can also be referred to as dispersed camping. Know that there are important guidelines to boondocking and dispersed camping, and we will include a link in the description so you can learn about those to keep our nature wild and beautiful. Now that you understand the concept of boondocking, camping on public lands with no amenities, let's talk about where are these public lands. First, these public land management agencies, such as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, the Bureau of Land Management, the National Forest Service, these are the places where you can park your rig for free and camp, sometimes for as long as 16 days before moving on to the next spot. Looking at a map of the public lands in our country, you can see that the vast majority of these are in the western United States, which works well for us because that's the side of the country that we're most stoked to explore more of. So now that you know what boondocking is and where the majority of these public lands are, let's talk about why you would want to boondock when you could go stay in a campground. The first why is cost. If you've never stayed in an RV campground, they might cost 30 to $50 for a night. That's not a big deal if it's just for a vacation, but if you're doing this for weeks or months at a time, even with the discounted rates that these campgrounds are likely to offer, you might still spend $1,000 a month parking and using the hookups, which we don't really need. And that is kind of the second part to this reason of cost. We just invested in a huge solar system we really don't need power. We have a generator that we used before we had the solar, and we also make sure to keep our freshwater tank as full as we can, and the other tanks as empty as we can. So we don't really have much of a need for these hookups. We just need land to park on. That said, for us, we would rather save that, say, $1,000 a month, and maybe spend some of that in gas, maybe in fun activities, and hopefully save some and invest for our future. We're not yet retired, so we've got something to think about there. By the way, speaking of cost, if you are curious what we spent in our first month on the road full-time in our RV, we made a video and you can check that out here. The second reason, very important, that we prefer boondocking to staying in campgrounds is we love open space. We love the outdoors and we love experiencing that, hopefully a little further from other people. We actually just stayed in our very first campground in our entire three plus months now of living in an RV. We were hosting some family. This was in Salt Springs, Florida, and we figured the convenience uh, would be worthwhile to check out the springs and enjoy some of the amenities that the campground had to offer. The campground was very nice. The amenities were great. We played some basketball on their courts. We walked some of their trails and it was only 34 bucks a night, so not bad but it was also a reminder of why we don't prefer to stay in campgrounds. I mean, we couldn't have been more than 10 to 12 feet from the neighbors next to us, and there were plenty of crying children, uh, slamming of a door that didn't work, and 
it just didn't have quite the feeling that we do get when we're on these vast open lands that we found in the past. And if you are boondocking in a very popular location, sure, there might be plenty of people and you may experience some of these same uh, you know, inconveniences or nuisances, but it is free and it is probably closer to the outdoors that you're trying to experience when you're camping. All right, so we've talked about what it is. We've talked a little bit about where these public lands are. We've talked a little bit about why we prefer to boondock whenever we can. Let's now talk about how do we find places to boondock that will suit our needs. So the first resource that I learned about years ago, just when we were camping out of a tent, is called freecampsites.net. It does exactly what you think. It is a platform where you can find free campsites. And I'll show you how it works. It's a website, you type in a location, you look at the map, you can read some reviews, you can see if a site is free, paid, whatever, and you can decide, you know, is this gonna make sense for me? Is this gonna fit our, say, you know, we have a 36 foot travel trailer, you know, in our case, we have a 28 foot um, RV with the bikes on the back. We need to make sure that, you know, we can drive in there, that the road isn't too dangerous, we have enough clearance, you know, the conditions are okay. So these are just things to think about before heading out to one of these locations. When we began to RV full-time, I stumbled upon Campendium. Campendium has a YouTube channel, a website, and most importantly, they have a mobile app. And that is practically all that we use now to find free campsites and boondocking locations. It's very similar to freecampsites.net, but the mobile app makes it very fast and convenient. And really you just type in a location or just look on the map based on where you are, look at what's nearby, click on it. Sometimes there are pictures, there might be reviews, they might even talk about the cell coverage in the area, and you go check it out. So I will say there are other resources and apps out there. I just, I found Campendium and it pretty much has serviced all of our needs so far in these first couple of months. And granted, we've also spent a lot of time just dry camping in random parking lots for the night. Um, but there are other resources I'll mention, such as there is a um, U.S. Forest Service and Bureau of Land Management mobile app, and that actually looks very comprehensive, and I probably should use it more. So that is noteworthy. There's also The Dirt. I think that is a paid app, though. I downloaded it, haven't really explored it. And then iOverlander is a free app where you can find boondocking locations. I should use that more. So figured I would throw those things out there. And to wrap up, we will share a few of the places that we have boondocked so far. And um, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. This was just kind of a, a beginner's guide to get you introduced to the concept, help you understand what it is, where you might go, why you might boondock. And here's a few examples of why we boondock. <music>